Chad. Can I just borrow that fucking crescent wrench? That big motherfucker. I set it up for you. Oh man. So what we're doing here is I just um, I just talked to a friend of mine at Oland who is in the race program. This suspension that I made uh, for this particular fork is out of a different diameter fork. It's out of a 41 millimeter fork. So because we're using a 43 millimeter fork, he is suggesting that we raise the oil level 20 mil. So what I'm doing right now is just unpreloading that spring. Get this cap off here. We set the oil level, we set it without the spring and preload spaces in the fork is when we set the oil level. Brad knows he's fucking shit. Yeah, I know. I, I love to pick his brain these days. So let's assemble the other four. So what I've done so far is I've just put um, new seals in here, cleaned everything up, made sure the, the tube was in spec and it was round and straight. Um, and now we're going to install this. So I've modified this um, cartridge. So this cartridge is specifically built for racing. The way this cartridge works is it pressurizes the oil uh, inside here. You can see in there there's two tubes. And what that really means is as this valve works, the oil's circulating from the outer tube into the inner tube back out again to get rid of the aeration in the oil and the oil is under pressure and how it's pressurized is this top out spring is drawn back like this and then we screw while it's drawn back with the tool I'll show you that in a second it pressurizes the oil inside the cartridge about 5 psi and that really stops cavitation along with the way the oil is circulated between the inner and outer tube um, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell so what we're going to do is we're going to install install the bottom right now so we're going to just put that in there and then we're going to um, put this tool all the way in the very very bottom to um, hold it while I lock the bottom in I just machined that tool this morning to make it there we go
Just make sure that that's tight. Okay, that's tight. Make sure it's tight from this side. Last thing you want is this shit to come loose when you're doing 140 miles an hour on the racetrack. So now, we're going to set this up to pressurize the fork. Before we do that, we're going to fill this with oil. And we're just going to fill it up above that tube because Right now it's bleeding. And a little bit more oil. We're just going to get the oil level above those tubes. Alright. So now we've got to set this up. So we'll do this. And we'll put this tube in. This is a tool that uh, a custom made here and machined it out so that this would go through it. I'll show you why I did that. So this comes through, then it locks into here, right there. Okay, I need to unscrew that a bit. Okay. So you see how this is fully uh, compressed, so it's loaded now. So what's happening now is it's full of oil, and I'm screwing that down into the bottom tubes but it's loaded right now. So right now it's screwing into those two tubes. And there it is, it locks. See that? Now it's locked in there. Now we can pull this out. And now that cartridge kit is actually loaded. I mean, it's pressurized. Watch this. See that? So that's, that oil is now pressurized. That cartridge is pressurized. So what that does, that, that's what really helps get rid of that cavitation. So now we're ready to set the oil level. All right, hold it right there for a second. Yep. Now I've already set this to the correct length to give me the correct oil level that I'm after. I want to make sure that it's right. Oh, oh, hang on. Drop that down level with the uh, top with the top right there. Yeah, yeah. Now lift it up. All right. All right, now we're gonna pop this in. And where's my spring? That's an 11. That's not it. I think I may have put it over here. That's a 10. That's what I want. What size were you looking for? Oh, it's the spring rate that I was looking for. It was a 10 for this particular bike because it's a pretty light bike which is a very heavy spring for a sport bike but 
a fairly very light spring for a Harley Davidson because of the weight of the bikes are different. Now the rear shocks is the same technology and they're actually made for a different bike. So we got to look at the valving and the spring rate and all that stuff. So we're basically engineering the shock for this bike. The hard part is knowing what springs to run and what sag measurements and that type of thing and how it's supposed to feel and oil level and things like that just from experience which uh, Brad, why I called Brad from Olin because he's super experienced with this particular suspension Can you help me for one second? Just hold these two. Okay. I guess he's got these custom spaces on the outside. So just hold these. Both on both sides? Yeah, while well, I screw it run the axle through. Okay. Smash it. He didn't have a, the bottom, the bottom pinch bolt. Yeah. Wasn't even in there. I know. And he hammered the shit out of the end of the axle. I, I went and machined it so, because he'd been beating the end of the axle with a hammer instead of using a piece of wood. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. A dead blow or something. <laughs> the right tool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. It's scary what some of these guys do. On so-called mechanics. So tomorrow is really qualifying, and then Saturday is the race. I think I just wanted to be there tomorrow, get it dialed into where he's like, oh my God, it's fucking amazing. And then let him race. I'm gonna put on brand new tires so we can see the tire wear. He's gonna run, uh, an SC1, which is a super soft compound because it's so cold right now. Yeah, it's freezing the other day. Huh? It's pretty crazy how cold it was for the desert. Yeah, right? Fucking 40 degrees, 47 degrees. Yeah. Already got that. Already got that. Alright. Um, uh, the bolt. 
I got shit everywhere. Yeah, you do. I'm a fucking nightmare. I'm a moving, walking nightmare. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Give me a bolt out of the warehouse for the engine out the big 716. Oh, that's it. I just pumped that front end, dude. Yeah. Feels vastly different <laughs> in a good way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't feel weird in a bad way, it just feels different. might be able to do is just measure the hole and see. Um, worst case scenario is I'll make a stud to thread into the frame yeah. and make a stud to go on here and put a nut on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to make a uh, male female extension two inches long yeah. out of stainless. Yeah. We've got to extend the shocks. We need 16 inch shocks and right now they're 14. And he's got to get on it right now. Okay. Because this has to be done today. Okay. <laughs> Take that and that. Stainless or steel, I don't care, as long as it's strong. Okay. Two inches? Two inches exactly. First I gotta dry it out. Then I gotta make all the tool pads in here that the machine's gonna take in the lathe. Then I convert it, you know, so the machine can read it, and I just put it in the machine. You gotta be careful when you program, make sure everything's correct, because if there's a mistake, you can crash the spindle, break the tool, even worse, break the spindle, which break the machine. That one, when it broke on us, because we had an intern and it broke on him, it was like 2K for the spindle. So, what we're doing. To extend these shocks, they're machining the extension down here, inch and a half. Uh, Mike at Olin's made me these custom plastic pieces, and I put O-rings on the body that I found to make it tight so it won't turn, and I put a, a steel clip here so that it can't go up. So this is our uh, preload adjuster right here. There's our spring, making the extensions. I just press this bearing in, put a clip on here, this will go here for the bump stop will go on here, so it hits here, you know, and you get a bump stop. Uh, and then that will all screw together, and it will all go on. It's going to be fucking badass. So now I'm just trying to get it to fit perfectly in here, so I got to go a little bit. Just 
got to be careful when I'm doing this because if, if I go over, the whole part's scrapped, you know what I mean? It's better to be over than to be under. Just gotta thread in the other end. Make this side female. So I've got the extension piece on here on the shaft, shaft extension. Um, now I'm going to put this body on. Now I'm going to put some O-rings on here. This will stop this from spinning so I can adjust the preload. So what we're doing is we're making custom shocks. These shocks were not made for anything to do with this. But we looked at the valving, we looked at the, the shock itself and said, well, we can probably make that work on this if we do this, this, and this. And these shocks are far, so far superior Voila. There we go. out here today um, doing some testing with Kevin on the uh, twin tube technology first when I went out took it a little bit easy trying to get back on the bearings of the bike um, it was it was at first it's it's different to get used to but once I started getting the feel for it the bike actually dives faster and quicker and it allows me to keep more traction on the tire through the corner so where I, earlier, where I wasn't able to power out of the corner due to the fact the loss of traction, now that I have so much traction with the different suspension, I can exit the turn harder and earlier and put the bike in a better position on the track. Um, it's some of the corners that I was going through before I would have to, how do you say, float through the corner. Um, let, it, let the bike come in slow and then hard out. Now with the suspension, because the tire is not cycling as fast and it's keeping it on the ground, I'm able to pull the throttle on the bike a lot faster, a lot earlier and exit the corner a lot quicker. Um, it, not only that, it's allowing the bike to hold better traction through all the slick parts of the track. Some of these parts of this track, um, crash corner, eight and nine coming into 10, the road is nasty. And before, because this bike is so heavy, you had to finicky, you had to play with the throttle control to make sure that the, the bike wouldn't to start to, to, to skip and push. And those same corners now with this suspension, I'm actually able to go into the corner, keep a consistent throttle and power out of it. And the minute the bike starts to skip, it rebounds so fast that it grabs traction again and doesn't allow me to push it out. So it's uh, definitely in a positive direction. It's it's. It's night and day difference. Um, I uh, I never thought I would see such big improvements off such subtle changes. I mean, it's not really a subtle change, it's a big change in suspension, but if you're riding the old Olin suspension that I used to have compared to this, it's it's like 
it's such an upgrade it's not even funny um i would strongly suggest anybody that's looking to race one of these or any harley davidson in that market if you're going to get serious about it this is what you're looking for hands down and some of the stuff that you can tell is you can see some of my we're going clockwise direction today and the truth's in the tire i'm getting a lot of tire tear because i'm able to pull out of the tire and out of the corner harder on the edge of the tire and because the tire is not skipping i'm actually tearing the right side up now it's more torn on the right than the left because obviously we're in a clockwise direction for this round of the, the racing on a day-to-day -day, you know right now because one it's new suspension um, i never ride anything brand new out of the box any more than 80 percent i need to make sure that it, it's going to feel good and that the bike's going to react to what we want it to do um, now that we're confident, I'm going to throw some new tires on it and we're going to go out there and give it a full 100, 100, 110 percent. But there's a couple factors that we need to correct first and then we're going to go for it. We're right above the two minute, 201, 202. Typically on this track, I'm under a two minute lap time. But because, like I said, conditions, old tires. So when we get back out tomorrow, we're going to have new tires, probably better conditions. The track will be a little hotter. Um, just came off a of fresh rain no more than two, three hours ago. And uh, we're gonna go forth with it. We're gonna run the Formula Twins class, uh, round four CVMA, and uh, look forward to see our finishing lap times and race results. This suspension that we just did, even though we still wanna fine tune it a little bit more, would you say it's like a 10% improvement, 20% improvement, 50% improvement? 100% improvement, 80% improvement, what would you think? You know, I, I don't want to go to the 100% right off the bat, but it, it's it's in the 80s, no problem. I mean, it's it's night and day difference, you know? It's like we were talking earlier. If the original Owens that we were running on this bike originally was at a five, this is definitely a 10 and an 11. I'm getting more feedback through the tire and the suspension so I can feel more. You can feel the road surface more. 100%, which ah, is key. Because, the, yeah. well, the road surface is what we're, what we're grabbing to, to power through, so. Yeah. Yeah. The, the more feeling I can get through the levers and into the bars, the more I know what the road is going to do and how it's going to react to the rear end. Are you going to push it as hard as you can tomorrow? 100%. 100%. We're going for broke tomorrow. Okay. Now, remember when we were talking earlier, we were talking about the difference between a road race and a drag race. Yeah. It's turn one. <laughs> so, once we go into turn one, you know what comes into play? Brakes and suspension. That's it. All those guys with all those big motors, right on. Let's see how you corner that bike. That's right, yeah. When it, it's funny because when you the first time you went out on the track this morning, you said, oh, I'm just going to take it easy. And I get up on the grandstand so I can see the track, and he's passing everybody. And I'm like, maybe he's in C group, not the A group, with all the pros. And then he comes off the track, and I said, were you in C group? He goes, no, I was in A group. I said, I thought you were going to take it easy. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is... When you get out there and you know it starts to feel good you know and you go around there and you're like oh yeah get you something oh get me some more of that that's what's up you know what i mean you come around the next corner and you're like i pushed it there let's see if i can push it a little harder and harder and we were getting to that point so the last time we were out there because the tire started to take a shit on me that had to stop yeah, because yeah. it was a traction issue no longer a where was the suspension issue at yeah, so yeah, yeah. so unfortunately it's a set of tires and then it's it's back out i, I want to know what track times you have tomorrow for sure 100 percent, and we'll compare them to today yeah and if you get under your best track time and we're in cold track conditions that says an awful lot 110 percent because you, you said you're at 201 right now i'm at 201 right now in cold conditions and your, best, your best track time is being 159 159 1598 you're like one sit <laughs> All right, so he's the second behind his best track time At 80%. Ever. At 80% <laughs> on a cold fucking track day at 60 degrees out here. Yeah, pretty I, much. I think you're doing a little bit better. <laughs> the results today were exactly what I wanted to see. And Eric was blown away. Couldn't believe how much the improvement was. Um, so what we're going to do now is go back to the shop change the rear springs out just a slightly lower spring rate in the rear to make it a little bit more supple um, then he's going to race tomorrow the next week i get a new vacuum filling machine 
I'll disassemble the rear suspension. Front suspension is dialed. Disassemble the rear suspension. I'm going to change the compression shim stacks to make it even soak up more stuff and get it right where I want to get it on the dyno. Then we'll put it on the track the following week and it's going to be just freaking incredible. Pick that son of a bitch as hard as you can. Okay, good. 17.5. We're at 16. Six and a half. So we wanna we don't wanna be that much. So it's about inch and an eight. Uh, it's what you want it, right? Yeah. Right on. I think it's perfect. There ain't nothing to do on the front end, is there? No, leave it. Right now, we remember, it's 16 and 12, right? Yeah, I was talking to Mike about that. I've got to record it. Yeah. I was talking to Mike about that on the way back, because he races a bike. Yeah, okay. He's like, you know, he's been racing for 20-something years. He's really good. I told him what my goal was just to race a He said, that's right of preference. Yeah. Some guys like to go into the corner and leave it to the last second of break and really get on the brakes super hard. And other guys will roll into the corner and do it differently and get on get out of the corner fast. So, so these adjustments we're making for you is really specific to you. Okay. He likes it the other way. What's he like it? He likes 14 and 14. 14 and 14. Yeah, which is what, you know, when you're coming out of the corner, you didn't like that. At 14 and 14. Yeah, but when I went down to 11, so I slowed down the rebound. Yeah. You like that. Yeah. Yeah. He just said that's a riding style. That's a riding style, okay. Now, should I change it and start taking it up? And, and, and would would changing the style and accommodate the 14 or 14, will that pull me out of the corner faster? That's a question for Jason Pridmore. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like I'm going to go talk to Jason today. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, your bike's dialed in. Yeah. Then I'll dyno test it against... What we have. What we... The old shocks and get right in that range there. Okay and which should put us in the middle of the valving on the shock. Okay. That's where we want to be, because then we can adjust up or down from there. Now, we did the looser spring. Should I be conscious of anything that maybe when I'm out there with the softer spring that I may have to do as far as adjustment? Nope, nope. You, you won't have to adjust the spring. It's set as far as sag. Okay. The only thing I want you to be confident, and it, you know, it's just under power is the bike dead stable. Yeah. If it is, then our spring's done. It, it's, it's doing its job, and that's yeah. the end of that. Okay. It's going to be a little bit more plush than the one we just had in it, but I, I like that idea. Yeah. To help us blow through compression just a little bit more and to be more supple. Okay. Through the, through the bumps and the ridges yeah, as yeah, I go yeah. through that corner. But we're going to supple it up next week anyway when we actually do the valving, valving. when we drop the harshness okay. out of it. Okay. And then there won't be anything more to do after that except go faster and faster and faster with you know with me yeah exactly i don't know where it starts to walk yet but i know it does i know i already can push it further than what i was on monday because i just did